from Jose Juicy Gonzalez and the Sandbox Radio Orchestra. So sit back and relax as we take you into the world. you didn't tell the first time? Come closer, my child. My voice is not so strong anymore. You ask for a story from a story. That I have. A story of that girl whose father, stupid man, for the promise of wealth. Well, it is always that, isn't it? The promise of wealth or beauty or life everlasting. All of us, dear one, trying to hang on to some form of protection against the inevitable. Our spirits fly off, whether rich or poor. But what we really yearn for, truth be told... Oh, dear, now where was I? The story from a story, Granny. Oh, what? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, first the story about, about the girl with the stupid father. Well... There are many stupid fathers in many stupid ways. But this father, he had become so poor, he couldn't think straight. And so, he made a deal with the devil. Do devils exist? Oh, yes. And they come in all types of guises. But what this father did was give away his future to a dapper gentleman devil who said, To give you wealth now... I want only later what stands out behind your barn. And this father, thinking it was only that old apple tree, said yes. But he didn't look first. And at that moment, it included his dear daughter back there doing her chores. But that devil didn't just take her. Oh, no. Devils are never direct like that. The torture can't be quick. They like it long and slow. That is the devilish way. That devil said, I'll be back in three years, and to the day he returned. Imagine those three years for that father and his daughter, living in riches, and knowing all the time something bad is coming. And so he came, that devil. That he did. He appeared all suave and slinking in a bridegroom's get-up, sharp black and white, to claim his bride. Here I am, sweetness, to take you to south, to the center of darkness, to my bed of fire. (laughs) But the girl, no dummy, had dusted a blue chalk circle in the sand and sat in the middle, protected by her goodness and the circle charm. Magic circle, pure, unbroken, 
Keep me whole in your eternity. Girl, give me my due. Tell your father what is true. My father gave away what he didn't know existed, devil. I am his daughter. My body is mine. Oh, daughter, forgive me. Devil, that's attempt number one. You see, the devil only gets... Three tries when he comes, and if you can trick him... I'll have my bride. You, father. I'll burn it all down if you give her water. Once she's dirty, I can get in there and get what is mine. And off he vanishes in a puff of sulfur smoke. Oh, daughter, forgive me. I must do as he commands. And that father brought her no water. And the girl cried and cried. I'm back. (laughs) Show your hands, you dirty girl. You muddy, dirty girl. (laughs) But her tears had washed her hands pure. Ah! Those pure hands... Chop them off! Chop them off, I say! Or I'll take you, Daddy, away in her place. Oh, daughter, forgive me! I'm afraid! Must I do this evil to you? Father, I am yours, and give myself to save you. And she reached out to him beyond the blue chalk circle. (laughs) (laughs) That's twice, you monster. I'll be back. Third time's the charm. Forgive me, daughter. Forgive me. The father gathered up those precious bloody hands, washed them, and placed them in a little silver sack, while the daughter sat weeping onto her bloody stumps. Save them for me, father. My sad gift to you. Finally, my bride, I'm here to snatch you up. You won't need hands on my bed of fire. Show me your dirty stumps, your bloody, dirty stumps. But again, her tears had washed away all traces of dirt and blood, and the girl stood, handless and spotless, before the demon in her magic blue circle. That's three, and now we are free. Fly away unsatisfied, you monster of hell. My daughter is released, and I'll keep her well. (laughs) Forgive me, daughter. I will make it up to you. You'll see. Yes, Father, I do forgive you, but no, I will not stay. Out into the world I must go to find goodness. And the girl's father helps her into her coat. Tie my arms to my back so that I may forget what it is to have hands. Her father does this, but says... Daughter, take your poor hands. Who knows what miracle can be wrought in this wide world? And the father fastens the small silver sack containing her hands to her belt... One last look, a kiss, and off she travels into the wide world, the girl with no hands. And she travels and weeps, and travels and weeps. Her tears wash her clean and heal her. Soon she is exhausted. Shimmering in the distance, she sees a shining castle surrounded by a moat, a lush garden beyond the water, and a tree laden with golden pears. The moat is deep and dark. She falls to her knees and calls out, Is goodness always beyond me? Please, world, let me be with what's good. The girl feels a hand on her shoulder. Before she can look to see whose hand it is, she hears singing and spirit angels appear. Water, 
The water parts, and the girl with no hands walks dry to the other side, sits down under the pear tree, and gazes at the sky. Oh, the world is good. The sky is lovely. And here is a perfect pear for my hunger. Using her mouth like a deer would, that girl with no hands nuzzles and eats a perfect golden pear, the juice dripping down her face and neck where once tears coursed. Mm, delicious. Mm. And she drifts off to sleep in the soft, mossy grass under the pear tree. Mm. But as the dawn starts to break, she feels a hand shake her shoulder. And she wakes to hear from the castle window above the garden... Who ate my pear? Quickly, the girl with no hands hides herself in the brush. Yesterday, I counted 43 golden pears, and today one less. Gardener! Gardener! My perfect pears! Oh, your royal highness! Forgive me. Last night, last night I saw an enchantment. A girl with no hands. I know I thought I, I was dreaming. No hands, but beautiful. A mysterious girl, my lord. She glowed with light. She sat under the tree and sang to the sky and then ate one pear and slept. And where is she now? That, your majesty, I don't know. For when she slept, I too fell fast asleep. A most incredible deep sleep. Oh, you know how I love a good sleep. <laughs> I want to see this mysterious girl. Into the garden the two run, king and gardener. They look around. They see nothing. And then, from behind a briar, the girl emerges and throws herself at the royal feet of the king. Forgive me. I am alone in the world seeking goodness. I found it here in your garden under this tree. How have you lost your hands? They were mine to give, and I gave them to save my father. Then, sweet girl, let me give them back to you. And that kind king had silver hands fashioned for the girl, and then loved her, married her, and together they counted and ate many perfect golden pears. <laughs> Granny. Their days... <laughs> Their days were filled with song, their nights with passion. Each night she placed the silver sack containing her hands under her pillow, and the couple awoke to each new morning with the feeling that they had been caressed and comforted the whole night long. My darling, each day is sweeter. And each night divine. Because, because you, you are, are mine. mine. But the devil watches and waits. And when the king is called off to war, leaving behind is now pregnant silver-handed girl bride. And now for the second act. <laughs> let me see him. Oh, let me hold my babe. And I put the girl's baby in her arms. A glowing boy, as beautiful as the perfect golden pears of which his mother was so fond. Oh, Granny, you were right there. I was right there. <laughs> Bring pen and paper. I must write to my heart, my king, and tell him of our baby boy. I took her letter, scented with roses, and sealed with a kiss, and gave it to the gardener. Quick, off with you to the war to tell our master of his joy, his perfect baby boy. I will fly. But that gardener, how he loves to sleep. And on the way, on a perfect sunny day. Oh, oh, just for a bit. It's such a warm day and such a long way. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. I'll switch that letter with this. Ooh, and steal this kiss. Imagine the king, his torment and strife, to learn what strangeness was born from his little wife. <laughs> oh, oh, dear me. I've slept the day away. Is that a storm I hear? No, a lovely evening. Goodness, I'm 
Must have been dreaming. I must fly. My liege, I've brought you news. What? My child a monster? How can this be? Oh, sire, no. I saw the babe myself. A healthy boy. But this letter... The call to battle. Here, take my reply. And off the gardener ran with the king's letter. But that sleepy gardener... Oh, it's been such a long journey. Just a short snooze. Oh. And here I am again. No, I don't always arrive with a thunderclap. Sometimes I slide into view. Another switch, scratch and itch. Now it's done. Beelzebub fun. The monster son will soon be none. (laughs) A letter from the king. Kill the The child. child. Kill Kill the the wife. wife. This enchantment must end or I'll lose my life. Save her tongue to prove the deed done. Obey my decree, you serve only me. Has the king gone mad? What can I do? The gardener must kill a deer and bring its tongue. Away with the babe and its queen till this madness is done. Oh, my dear queen, I am so sorry. Perhaps the war has hardened your king's heart. I am leaving richer than I came. My babe and I will find a home. In a world where goodness always ends, there are ever new beginnings. Somewhere there is goodness forever. And off the little queen and her baby journeyed on her impossible quest. My darling babe... I'll need help to feed you. These silver hands are all for show. Oh, for a friend to help me. The world can be good. I know. Sister, cross the water. Sister, walk on by. Here is your home. Goodness is with you always. Meanwhile, I sit in the castle with that sad, dear tongue and wait for the king's return from his war. I'm home. Where is my wife? Oh, how can you make such a jest after such cruelty? Here is her tongue, that sweet tongue that never spoke ill. The tongue which you demanded in your letter is the proof of her sorry end. Never. Never. How could you think... No, I am good. Oh, how they wail. (laughs) Always they fail. Is it goodness they seek? Humans are so weak. Oh, Master, I did not do as you wrote. I could not do what was unimaginable because I too am good. Your wife... Lives, though I know not where. Bless all the goodness in the world. I will find them. And that is what he does. Wandering, searching, his beard growing long, his tears washing him for seven years. Until one day he comes upon a boy playing under a golden pear tree. Young man? Young man, tell me your name. My mother calls me full of grief. But... I am happy all the day. And why does she call you this sad name, child? Mm, Because Mama thinks goodness never lasts. And what do you think? I think goodness is where you find it. And I find it all day long. 
Then the girl, now a woman, appears and sees her king. She kneels with him and they weep, how they weep, washing all their sorrow away as her hands caress and pet them both and their boy plays and sings. Her hands, Granny? Her hands? Yes, my darling. Crawling and sprouting anew. All four of her sweet girl hands. I tell you what, the bitch can come to pay, but she can't come to stay. Hello! <laughs> hold up, hold up, I gotta take this. It's a client call, yo. Payback Incorporated, Payback speaking, may I help you? I'm stressed, but I'm strong. Hello! I say I'm stressed, but I'm strong. I'm stressed, but I'm strong. Feel me? I'm handling the situation. Look, what you want? I'm trying to ride the bus here. Well, how many candy bars she want? What? No. You tell her I only sell candy bars by the fitty. I don't sell no candy bars by the piece. You got to buy the fitty pack or higher. All right? All right. Peace. This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. <laughs> The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard in the back of the 358. Names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. We do more business before 3 a.m. than the rest of y'all do all day. <laughs> Previously on Markheim by Paul Mullen. Upstairs, once this case closed, the flip's important, quasi-apocalypse shit and so forth. The clockwork ostensibly turns on this kid. We are very short-handed. So, no then? Or give me a Markheim. What I don't see is why you need me. We're short-staffed and the flip fits in the clockwork. Sure, something to do, I guess. I'll need your ticket. If you're blown, you're on your own. You think there's a god flip? Hell no! Well, there is. I've met him. He wants this. Trust me. Do it. Slash. Get a taste. You know you want to. Who are you? Oh, shit. You're something holy, aren't you? It's just a glow flip. You'll get over it. No. I'll never get over this. You saved me. That was fast. Yeah. Here's your ticket. Yeah, keep it. This is a problem, Markheim. Maybe, but it's not mine. I'm done with the fix. How long you think they'll let you just wander around over here unchaperoned? Who's saying Sam can't just scoop you up? He's had opportunities prior. He may not see it the same, you being a tourist. Sam and I go way back. That's what everybody says about Sam. Markheim. <laughs> And now, episode two. There is a city that doesn't matter, glistening gray, virtually submerged in the murk. You can hide in this city when you're sick of mattering. Who's a good boy? <laughs> you are, aren't you? Yes, you are. That your dog, then? No. How come you got it on that rope? Watching it for a friend. That little juggalo girl? Don't know what that means. You're new on the streets, then? On these streets, yeah. Thinking of making the harbor steps your turf? Does it matter? Yup. <coughs> you look clean, but not sober. Like you got coin. You slumming? I'm a Markheim. I'm an Indian. But I'm not drunk, got it? Got it. Name's Smiley. I'm sort of an angel, but not a moralist. Got it? An angel? Sort of. 
I don't believe in that shit. That's probably better. You saying you can fly? Sort of. That shit means nothing to me. You should steer clear of those juggalo turds. I don't know what that means. Those kids sometimes paint their faces like clowns, always sparing for the change at Westlake. Claim they're fans of them nasty rappers, insane clown posse. That kid Liv runs with them sometimes. Who? The pretty girl gave you that dog. She can't be 15. She didn't give me the dog. I'm watching it. She got a chance to get a shower. I'll bet she did. Look, Smiley, you got a problem with me? I don't like angels, if that's what you mean. I ain't much of one. Am I going to see more of your kind? Not if I can help it. Harbor Steps ain't nobody's territory. Security bikes will roust you soon. You'll see. They won't see me. Why not? It's an angel thing. Why I gotta see you? Doesn't work on some. Guess you're one of the luckies. Yeah, lucky. Don't get comfortable, cousin. I rarely do. See you later. Maybe, if you're lucky. The flip fits in a clockwork. That's what the chub said. So what was it? Does it matter? Hard to see how. But I'm in this city now. Might as well dig. Something to do. Pick up the thread and follow it. Spare the change. Bus fare to Fremont. Miss, you got a bus transfer? Sorry, Orca card. Oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Oh. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. What are you doing? I'm begging. How's that working out? Not so good. They don't seem to give much here. It's 21st century America, Markheim. You don't have to be an angel to be invisible. What do you need money for, anyway? I'm trying to take a bus. A bus? Where? Fremont. So just spirit there. I always taste the fix when I do that. So? So it's unpleasant. You don't remember. Oh, I remember. Granted, it's been a while, but I remember. I just don't remember it being unpleasant. Each his own. Plus, what would I do with the dog? Good point. Come on, hop in. I'll drop you in three mine. I like dogs. <laughs> free mine if you please, Karen. I've never ridden in a car before. This isn't a car, Mark. I'm, it's a Bentley. Sorry, Sam. Oh, don't be so serious. That was always your worst fault. Yep. It's good to see you. Is it? Sure. Strange. But good. What do you got going in Fremont? Nothing. Looking someone up is all. Someone, huh? Meat cloud or smoke? I'm done with the cloud and smoke. Ah, so it's the meat Jones you got. Yep. That can be ticklish. It's not a Jones. I'm just... What? Following up on something. Cloud business? Nope. You gonna kid a kidder? Fine. I flipped a wobbler, okay? That's cloud business last, last time I checked. And I'm done with it. It's just... I wanted to follow up. What on earth for? Curious. Ooh, it's worse than I thought. I'm no trouble to you or any smoke. And how do you know that for sure? You see the clockwork, do you? I got no beef with smoke. Or cloud? Or cloud. You're walking neutral. That's right. No, no, Karen. Yo. Take Dexter. That suicide fence they put up on Aurora Bridge offends my sensibilities. <laughs> I don't get out much to this city. No point to it, really. Not much matters out here. But it's still my city, see? They all are. Well, except for that one. But exception proves the rule, and that's not the point anyway. The point is, you're a guest here. My guest. If you're walking neutral. And I take you at your word on that. But should new information come to light, should this city start to matter for reasons unfucking foreseeable I'm going to appreciate you sharing the news with me. Understood. For as you know, I'm a deeply appreciative fellow. Oh, yes. What? Deeply appreciative. You mocking me, Markheim? No. I thought it was pretty common knowledge. I don't like to be mocked. Of course. It's about the only thing that really irks me. I'm sorry, Sam. Truly. Don't forget I know what creaks in your attic. 
I apologize, okay? I wasn't mocking you, but I'm sorry if it even seemed like I was. All right, Mark. Have your little vacation. What do I care? Just check in if there's any change in status. Okay. Of any kind. You got it. Things can always get uglier, right? Yes. I don't need to remind you of that, do I? No. You can pull over right up here, just west of Lennon. <laughs> What's Lennon? Not a what, but a who. That's his statue back there. He was hot last century. Too bad you missed him. That's some meat could have used a mark on. Thanks for the ride, Sam. Thanks for the chat, Mark. I'm. See you around. I wouldn't count on it. I don't get out here much. Town kind of bums me out. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching Black Francis. He was really no bother. I'm glad he likes you. You find what you were looking for in Fremont? Maybe. What's juvie? Juvie? You really don't know what juvie is? I really don't. Is your friend in juvie? He's not my friend, and that's my understanding, yes. I'll get someone to take you there. Can't you take me? Nah. Look, Mark, I have a huge favor to ask. I don't do favors. Can you watch Black Francis for me again? For a few days? Maybe a week? Why? I'm going home. No. Please. A guy I went to grade school with is coming back from Vancouver later tonight. Says he'll give me a ride back to Eugene, but he won't let Black Francis come. Not that my stepdad would let a dog in the house anyways. You can't go back home. Why? You know why. I have to. No, you don't. You have a choice. Make it. I got a sister back there and a little stepbrother, too. They have to live with that asshole. They can't run away to Seattle. You can't help them. I can. You can't. And it would be nice to brush my teeth a couple of days in a row. First thing he'll do is rape you again. Then he'll rape your little sister for the first time to show you that he can and that he'll do it over and over if you leave. Then he'll beat you. Then he'll rape you again. You have to stay away. You have to save yourself. You're the only person you can save, and even that's iffy. You cannot go back. You have to survive. Survival is all there is. I have a sister. Not anymore. You have yourself and you have to protect it. Myself is not an it. I'm a person. Persons are connected to other persons. We have to help each other. Don't go. Look at you. What? You, you glow. You know that? No, I don't. <laughs> you do. It gives you away. You're like my demented guardian angel or something. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to show me how selfish I can be, and I have the choice to be that way, but that I can be better. Trust me, that's not what I'm trying to do. I do trust you. You're looking out for me in your own weird way, and you're the only one I trust with my black bean. Besides, this town's getting heavy. A juggalo kid I know got burned two nights ago on those spooky steps that come out at Union and Terry. What do you mean he got burned? I mean somebody lit him on fire. Dead? Yeah, dead, and I use those steps all the time. Don't go back home. I have to, and you know it. I do not glow. Sure you don't. I give you one thing. What's that? Those security bikes really don't seem to see you. I mean, you squat here every night and never get rousted. How about that? Where's your jailbait juggalo girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend, and she's not a juggalo. She told me you don't know anything. Oh, cuz, I know everything. Then why are you asking me where she went? See if you'd lie. She's halfway to Eugene by now, ain't she? Well, ain't she? Yeah, probably. So, how do I find Juvie? <laughs> juvie? Why you wanna find Juvie? You looking for more little girls? There was a wobbler I flipped, a kid that I, I guess you could say I convinced not to kill someone he was robbing. And now I wanna see how he's doing. You a do-gooder? Not hardly. I'm a Markheim. What the hell is that? I thought you knew everything. Not that stupid shit. <laughs> I'm an angel, sort of like. Only I got a license, see? A license for what? A Markheim can do shit other angels can't. Such as? Well, there's all kinds of Markheims. Beaters, burners, bribers, ballers. What are you? Me? I'm a talker. <laughs> I talk. So do I. Don't make me no angel. I suppose you got a point there. You know what you are? What? 
fool of yourself. That's what Markheim. <laughs> Coming up in the next episode of Markheim. Someone's been burning juggalos, Marky, on stairways outside. Three so far. Unless you can't live, since she's gone missing and... Oh, look, you got her dog. And oh, look, you hang out on steps. I'm not a burner, I'm a talker. You ain't gonna talk your way out of this. Oh, I think I might. <laughs> Hello, Markheim. Remember me? Name's Mara. Demon choker? Maybe we never met. You'll remember me next time, right? I'm gonna let you breathe in a second, and you're gonna remember who you're dealing with, right? I ain't no meat punk. I'm a demon got the drop on you, and things can always get uglier, right? Yeah. I don't need to remind you of that, do I? No. Good. Sam says hi. (sighs) Obviously. He's got a job for you. I'm sitting neutral. He knows that. We talked personally. Somebody's burning teenage kids. I heard. What's that got to do with me? Sam thinks it's cloud work. Doubtful. But so what? I'm sitting neutral. Sam smells a Markheim. I ain't the only Markheim. But you're the local Markheim. Sam figures that makes it your problem. Why are you doing this? I'm a murderer, Markheim. It's what I do. What's your claim to fame? I talk. Oh. Yeah. I don't like talkers. They creep me out. (laughs) I don't like murderers. So the town's not big enough for two Markheims? That's what you're saying? That's the gist. That's next time on Markheim. Things can always get uglier. Sandbox Radio You need any razors, man? I got some really nice razors. Razors? Nah, man. I got plenty of razors. I got razors I ain't even used yet. What kind of razors you got? Look at man, I got the Schick Hydro 5 Blade Razor Plus two replacement cartridges. I also have the 10 packs of replacement cartridges. Price to sell, brother. Dude, you ever try those six-blade razors? I don't like the six-blade because they're so close together, they don't give the whisker a chance to pop back up, you know? Right, right. I hear ya. How much for the razors? Man, I'll give you one of these Schick Hydro 5s plus two replacement cartridges for two dollars. That is a good value. Oh, hey, this is my stop. Take care, brother. You take care. This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard in the back of the 358. Names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. You gotta let the whisker pop back up, man. It is a sentence of this court that you be taken from here to place of execution and there hanged by the neck until you are dead. May God have mercy upon your soul. For the wild narrative which I am about to relate, I neither expect nor solicit belief. My immediate purpose is to place before the world plainly, succinctly, a series of mere household events. In their consequences, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me. Hereafter, perhaps, some intellect may be found which will reduce my phantasm to the commonplace. Some intellect more calm, more logical, and far less excitable than my own. For today, I would unburden my soul. For tomorrow, I die.
From my infancy, I was noted for the docility and humanity of my disposition. My tenderness of heart was even so conspicuous as to make me the jest of my companions. I was especially fond of animals and was indulged by my parents with a great variety of pets. With these I spent most of my time and never was so happy as when feeding and caressing them. There is something in the unselfish and self-sacrificing love of an animal which goes directly to the heart of him who has had frequent occasion to test the paltry friendship and gossamer fidelity of mere man. When I married, I was happy to find in my wife a disposition not uncongenial with my own, and she lost no opportunity of procuring pets of the most agreeable kind. We had... Birds, goldfish, a fine dog, rabbits, a small monkey. And most especially... Surprise, dearest! Isn't he the loveliest creature? Oh. A cat. This latter was a remarkably large and beautiful animal, entirely black and sagacious to an astonishing degree. He's so intelligent, don't you find? I wonder... My wife at heart was not a little tinctured with superstition. I wonder at the ancient popular notion which regards all black cats as witches in disguise. Oh, not that I believe it myself. Pluto. This was the cat's name. Was my favorite pet, and I alone fed him and... He attended me wherever I went about the house. It was even with difficulty that I could prevent him from following me through the streets. Our friendship lasted in this manner for several years, during which my general temperament and character through the instrumentality of the fiend intemperance had, I blush to confess it, experienced a radical alteration for the worse. I grew day by day more moody, more irritable. Edgar. Dearest, um, what's the matter? Now leave me alone. But darling, I just, I, please don't go out tonight. I, I worry so that the dream, it isn't good for you. God damn you, you had it in your harpy. You bore me. You disgust me. Get out. No, please. I suffered myself to offer her personal violence. But for Pluto, I still retained sufficient regard to restrain me from maltreating him. But I made no scruple of maltreating the rabbits, the monkey, or even the dog, when by accident or through affection they came in my way. But my disease grew upon me. For what disease is like alcohol? And at length... Even Pluto... Who is now becoming old and consequently somewhat peevish. Even Pluto began to experience the effects of my ill temper. <sighs> Later that night, returning home, much intoxicated from <laughs> one of my haunts about town, I fancied that the cat avoided my presence. I seized him when, in his fright at my violence... He inflicted a slight wound upon my hand with his teeth. <laughs> The fury of a demon instantly possessed me. I knew myself no longer. My original soul seemed at once to take its flight from my body, and a more than fiendish malevolence, gin nurtured, thrilled every fiber of my frame. I took from my waistcoat pocket a penknife, opened it, grasped the poor beast by the throat, and deliberately cut out one of its eyes from the socket. When reason returned with the morning, when I had slept off the fumes of the night's debauch, I experienced a sentiment half of horror, half of remorse for the crime of which I had been guilty. But it was, at best, a feeble and unequivocal feeling, and the soul remained untouched. I again plunged into excess and soon drowned in wine all memory of the deed. The cat slowly recovered. The socket of the lost eye presented a frightful appearance, and though he went about the house as usual, fled in extreme terror at my approach. I had so much of my old heart left as at first to be grieved by this evident dislike on the part of a creature... Which had once so loved me. But this feeling soon gave place to irritation. And then came, as if to my final and irrevocable overthrow, the spirit of perverseness. 
Of this spirit, philosophy takes no account. Yet I'm sure perverseness is one of the primitive impulses of the human heart. Who has not a hundred times found himself committing a vile or silly action for no other reason than because he knows he should not? It was this unfathomable longing of the soul to vex itself, to offer violence to its own nature, to do wrong for the sake of wrong alone, that urged me to continue and finally to consummate the injury I had inflicted upon the unoffending brute. One morning in cold blood, I slipped a noose about its neck and hung it to the limb of a tree, hung it with the tears streaming from my eyes and with the bitterest remorse at my heart, hung it because I knew that it had loved me and because I felt it had given me no reason of offense, hung it because I knew that in so doing I would so jeopardize my immortal soul as to place it, if such a thing were possible, even beyond the reach of the infinite mercy of God. That very night. Edgar! Mm. Edgar! Dearest, mm. wake up! What, what is it? What's the matter? There's smoke! Oh, oh the, God! The bed curtains! Fire! 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 Run! Try not to breathe, just run! Oh, my God! Where is Pluto? Hurry, hurry, dear, please! Go, go, the stairs are burning! The whole house was blazing. It was with great difficulty that my wife, a servant, and myself made our escape. The destruction was complete. My entire worldly wealth was swallowed up, and I resigned myself thenceforward to despair. Our house in ruins. What will we do? <laughs> The walls had fallen in, excepting one, not very thick, which stood about the middle of the house, and against which had rested the head of our bed. The plastering had here, in great measure, resisted the action of the fire. About this wall, a dense crowd were collected, and many persons seemed to be examining a particular portion of it with very minute and eager attention. Look at that. How strange. The marks on the plaster. Yes, that black figure. Why, it looks like. As if... Graven in bas relief upon the white surface with an accuracy truly marvelous. The figure of a gigantic cat. Heavens, there is a rope about the animal's neck. I beheld this apparition, for I could scarcely regard it as less, and my wonder and my terror were extreme. For months I could not rid myself of the phantasm of the cat. And I went so far as to regret the loss of the animal, looking about me among the vile haunts, which I now habitually frequented, for another pet of the same species, and of somewhat similar appearance with which to supply its place. Hmm. One night, as I sat half stupefied in the den of more than infamy, my attention was suddenly drawn to some black object reposing atop one of the immense hogsheads of... That's wrong, you idiot! <laughs> I had been looking steadily at the top of this barrel for some minutes. Why had I not sooner perceived the object thereupon? I approached it and touched it with my hand. Well, hello. Hello. Where did you come from? I see. Well, very well, then. Oh. It was black and very large, fully as large as Pluto, oh. and closely oh. resembling him in every oh. respect but one. Oh. This cat had a large splotch of white, covering nearly the whole region of its breast. How much will you take for this creature? Doesn't belong to me, gentlemen. Never seen the beast before. Not mine. Take it if you've a care to. <laughs> As the denizens of the bar made no claim to it, and the animal evinced a disposition to accompany me, I permitted it to do so, occasionally stooping and patting it as I proceeded home. Oh, oh, oh. oh Eddie, how wonderful of you. Thank you. Doesn't he remind you of dear old Pluto? <laughs> oh. Though the beast became her immediate favorite for my own part, I soon found a dislike to it arising within me. This was the reverse of what I had anticipated, but I know not how or why it was. Its evident fondness for myself rather disgusted and annoyed. 
A certain sense of shame in the remembrance of my former deed of cruelty prompted me to avoid the creature, and I came to look upon it with unutterable loathing and to flee silently from its odious presence as from the breath of a pestilence. Adding to my hatred of the beast was a discovery that, like Pluto... It also had been deprived of one of its eyes. Poor thing. How sad. (laughs) My wife still possessed that humanity of feeling which had once been my distinguishing trait, a humanity of which I was now bereft. With my aversion to the creature's partiality, for myself seemed to increase. It followed my footsteps, crouched beneath my chair or covered me with its loathsome caresses. I would would have it between my feet and thus it would nearly throw me down or or fastening its long sharp claws in my clothes clamor in this manner to my breast. I longed to destroy it. I do so love that mark of white upon his breast. Don't you agree, Eddie? (laughs) Eddie. Dear, what's the matter? Oh, horror. For the character of the mark of white hair, which constituted the sole visible difference between the strange beast and the one I had destroyed, this mark, originally very indefinite, had assumed a rigorous distinctness of outline. It was the representation of a hideous of a ghastly thing, of the gallows. Now indeed, I was wretched. I knew the blessing of rest no more. During the day, the creature left me no moment alone, and in the night, I started hourly from dreams of unutterable fear to find the hot breath of the thing upon my face. The feeble remnant of the good within me succumbed. Evil thoughts became my sole intimates. The darkest and most evil of thoughts, hatred of all things and of all mankind, I now blindly abandon myself to sudden, frequent, and ungovernable outbursts of fury. Edgar, Hmm? I I don't mean to intrude. What? What? Well... What do you want? Forgive me, I can see you're unwell. For God's sake, what is it? All right, well, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'm not quite strong enough. Just tell me what you want, damn you! Uh, might you help me bring the coal up from the cellar? I... Oh, very well, very well. Then will you let me be? As we descended into the cellar of the old building which our poverty compelled us to inhabit, the cat followed, nearly throwing me headlong. No. Damn it! No. This will fix you! Edgar, for the love of God, put down the axe! I'm going to rid myself of this monster once and for all! Spare the poor beast! It means you no harm! Let go of my arm, woman! Please don't! Let go, damn you! I withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the axe in her brain. She fell dead upon the spot without a groan. I set myself forthwith and with entire deliberation to the task of concealing her body. I knew that I could not remove it from the house, either by day or night, without the risk of being observed by the neighbors. Many projects entered my mind, cutting the corpse into minute fragments and destroying them by fire, digging a grave for it in the floor in the cellar, casting it in the well in the yard packing it in a box as if merchandise with the usual arrangements and so getting a porter to take it from the house. Finally, I hit upon it. Wall it up in the cellar as the monks of the Middle Ages are recorded to have walled up their victims. In one of the walls was a void caused by a false fireplace that had been filled up and made to resemble the red of the cellar with a crowbar. I dislodged the bricks and deposited the body against the inner wall. I propped it in that position and relayed the whole structure as it originally stood, carefully plastering over the new brickwork so it could not be distinguished from the old. Now, to rid myself of the beast which had been the cause of so much wretchedness. But the crafty animal had been alarmed at the violence of my previous anger and had run off. A second day and a third day passed and still my tormentor came not. 
I breathed as a free man. The monster had fled. My happiness was supreme. The guilt of my dark deed disturbed me but little. Some few inquiries were made, but nothing was discovered. I looked upon my future felicity as secured. Upon the fourth day of the assassination... Yes? Good day, sir. What is it? Sorry to disturb. Not at all. Sergeant, well, what may I do for you? I believe I've already answered all your questions. Again, I apologize, sir, but we've a warrant to search the house one last time. Shouldn't take a moment. Oh, uh, well, of course. Would you mind showing us about, sir? Shall we begin in the cellar? I was secure in the inscrutability of my place of concealment. I quivered not in a muscle. My heart beat calmly as that of one who slumbers in innocence. Yeah? <laughs> nothing odd here, Sergeant. Indeed. Well, sir, we are satisfied there is nothing of concern. Again, forgive the intrusion. But the glee of my heart was too strong to be restrained. I burned through the mere frenzy of bravado to say, if but one word, by way of triumph, Gentlemen! I am delighted to have allayed your suspicions. I wish you all health. Uh, by the by, gentlemen, this is a very well-constructed house. Yes, it seems so. I may say an excellently well-constructed house. You are fortunate in such a house, sir. Well, we will see ourselves out. Uh, uh, these walls, are you going, gentlemen? These walls are solidly put together here. You see? What the devil? May God shield and deliver me from the fangs of the arch fiend. Mercy on us. What is that? Whatever it is, it's behind that wall. Pull it down. Uh, look, this plaster is fresh. Uh, See how easily it comes apart? The horror. That cry, like the cry of a sobbing child, yet utterly anomalous and inhuman. A howl such as might have arisen only out of hell, conjointly from the throats of the damned in their agony and of the demons that exult in their damnation. Sir, are you ill? God defend us! The corpse, already greatly decayed and clotted with gore, stood erect before us. Upon its head, with red extended mouth and solitary eye of fire, sat the hideous beast whose craft had seduced me into murder, and whose informing voice had consigned me to the hangman. <laughs> I had walled up the monster within the tomb. <laughs> Welcome to All Hallows Eve tour of the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in beautiful Eastern Washington. <laughs> hey, stupid young man, wake up, you're missing the tour. What? Huh? Oh, where am I? Tasty imbecile. You're on a tour of the largest radioactive waste site in the Western Hemisphere. A virtual cauldron of sinister delights. <laughs> nah, I was tossing back a few at the bar. Wait, is that a broom? Silence, or I'll seal your mouth with wasp glue. Oh. Out oh. your window on left, behold, the golf ball, where the stored waste was so hot, the airspace above was off limits to airplanes, ghosts, and even witches. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know about this tour. Quiet, you dense morsel. To right, we have the infamous plutonium burial grounds. Humongous vats of plutonium were poured directly into open trenches. <laughs> Oh. What does he mean, humongous vat? 
How much waste is under this place? Idiot cluck. Have you seen Lake Washington? Yeah? Imagine two of those poured directly into the ground. Now that's some serious boil, boil, toil, and trouble. <laughs> hey, lady, I don't really think that's funny. Take a chill pill, peon. It'll be years before it hits the Columbia. Now for the highlight of the Halloween tour. We go skinny dipping by the outflow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you say? Off with those jeans, you tempting piece of toast. Let's go get crapped up. No way. Oh, is Baby Cakes afraid of a little rad waste? I'm not getting off this bus, man. <laughs> Scaredy pants. Scaredy pants. Scaredy pants. Man, let go of me. Dude, dude, hey, dude, dude, wake up. I'm staying on the goddamn bus. What bus? You're at the Georgian Dragon, dude. What? Oh, oh, man. I had a Hanford nightmare. Another one? And you were this weird vampire tour guide. There's only one way to handle a Hanford nightmare, and that's to go to HanfordChallenge.org and find out what you can do to keep the cleanup on track and effective. Hanford Challenge. That's right. Anything to avoid skinny dipping by the outflows. What? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Find out what you can do about the nightmare in Washington's own backyard. Visit HanfordChallenge.org today. Please welcome to the microphone Mr. K. Brian Neal. Yeah. 
I got more, more for you. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Stop. No, <laughs> please don't. That's for you, oh. for you. Oh, God, yes. Good? Uh, yes. Uh, um, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Rosa. Uh, 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 I think you broke me. <laughs> Where are you going? Water. Parched. I'm just going to check messages. What? Just take me one sec. You're, you're on the computer? I'm just Already? checking status updates. You're not supposed to go on Facebook after sex. Zuckerberg said so. Hey, oh my God. Is that her? Who? That's her. No. She has a profile? Weird. Did you know? Have you looked at this before? Oh, that, that would be sick. She's dead. She came up as a friend suggestion. God, our poor family. Why is all this still here? L let's go to sleep. Look, there's galleries. Summer 2008, Alki Beach. Please don't open those. Is that her? In the bikini? I think so, yes. Oh, and you did sleep with her. Okay, it's her. She's gorgeous. Ah, she was okay. You're gorgeous. Her body is perfect. It's not... It, it's not perfect. I mean, it, it wasn't. This is really confusing. Is that you kissing her? Probably. She looks so happy. So do you. It was three years ago. It's so eerie. Everything is preserved. Do you want to read her last status update? No! This is perverse. Just turn it Here off. Here it is. Owen brought me flowers, and now I'm sneezing. That is so sweet. Oh, I'm really tired. She loved you, didn't she? They need to close the profile. This is wrong. Maybe your family knows. Maybe they want it active. Why? She still has friends, a status. She's almost a person. It would be like killing her twice. You can be so odd sometimes. 
You said this was a free scan. I wouldn't have to buy anything. Yes, sir, that's right. I'm looking at the screen. It says I still have infected files. It's sending me to a download page and asking for my credit card. Sir... I'm not giving you my credit card. Hello? Are you there? Uh, sorry, what did you say? I said your site wants my credit card. Sir, we don't request that information. My email is hacked. Why would I give, want to give you my credit card number? That, that's not our site. If you just click refresh... I'm on your site. I'm looking at your site. I'm supposed to get a free virus scan? Yes, I can help you with that if you'll just... I've been on the phone with you for 35 minutes, and I don't think you're even paying attention to me. Are you there? What? What the hell was your name? Orson? Oliver? Hey, Owen. Whoa, hot pick. Jack, I'm, I'm on a call. Mm, looks like it. Uh, uh, sir, let me help you create a system restore point. We did that half an hour ago. Who is that whistling on the line? Uh, no one, sir. It, it, it's the connection. Listen to me, you insolent prick. The only copy of my fantasy novel, Six Years of Work, is on this laptop, and I can't access it. I want your supervisor. Allow me. This is Jack. I'm Owen's supervisor. Fantasy novels suck, especially yours. Enjoy your viruses. So, what's her name? You shouldn't have done that. It's a free virus scan. What do they expect? Damn, she is hot. Who is she? My old girlfriend, Annalise. Snooping the ex on Facebook on company time. I like your style. Jesus, why do some girls show so much skin online? Oh, sorry. Do you obviously still have feelings? No, she's, um, she died three years ago. You're shitting me. This girl is dead and still on Facebook? It's very odd. It's all still here. Galleries, videos... Why didn't her family close it? I asked them not to. Does Rosa know you did that? Sure, but sort of. Annalise was totally hot. Why'd you ever break up? She was raped and murdered. I suck. I really totally suck. I am suckful. Oh, it's okay, you didn't know. I'm an ass. I didn't know you were still with her when it happened. What are you doing? Posting on her wall. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not good. Hey, come on, Owen. You should not be doing this. I just said I missed her. She's dead. It's just an algorithm. Owen, log off. Seriously, you need to get out of Facebook. I know, I know. I mean it. Log off. Fine. I'm going to do it for you. Move. Wait, Jack. Did you see that? Oh. No. No, 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 no. Fuck me. She just liked my post. She did not. She did not like your post. She did. She liked it. The break is over. Break is totally officially what over. What the hell? What the hell? It's a prank. Some asshole hacked her account. Some insensitive fuck is in her profile, and you need to unfriend her now. I can't. Unfriend her. I mean it right now. I need to go. Owen, I really think this violates the terms of service. Hi. Hey, it's me. Miss you. Uh, miss you, too. They said you left work early. Ah, uh, yeah, I got to be too much. Where are you? I hear birds. Nowhere. I'm at home. Uh, you're not at home, because I'm at home. I'm on the roof. What roof? Downtown. Parking garage. Where he cut her open. You're where? No one else was here. He held her down. She couldn't scream. He violated her. Then he started to separate her, all her pieces. Come home, right now. Get off that roof. Get away from there. It took her so long to die. Bleeding, spreading. Owen, get off the rooftop. Can't. I'm reading her posts. Your what? That's the past. It's over. No, these are new posts. Come home, please, Owen. She just sent me an audio file. That is so nice. She's been practicing. She's really good now. Come home, right now. I'm happy here, Rosa. Love. Love. <laughs> Love you. Love. Owen? Are you there? Owen? Love you, Owen. Love you. Love you. Owen! Why don't you 
you two have a seat. I'll bring your drinks right over. Thank you. Come on, sit down. What, why are we here? Just sit. I want you to relax. Why? This is my fault. I, I feel like crap. Everything's fine. Everything? How is everything fine? Because it is. We're going to log on. We're going to say goodbye. Are you, you're going to unfriend her. I don't think so. Fine, then I'll log you on. You know my password? Of course I know your password. Okay, there's her profile. How do you know my password? Okay, to Extra Tall Double Shot Caffeine Tower. Thank you. Whoa, good-looking woman, friend of yours. I'll get back to work now. <laughs> it was three years ago. Y you have to get past this. Look, nothing to be afraid of, just videos and galleries and, um, Owen? What is that? New gallery. There's no new gallery. She said she'd post something new for me. Who is screwing around with this profile? Open it. No, that's someone's sick. Game. I'm unfriending no, her. No, you will not. Let go of me. You will not take my girlfriend. You will not take her. Owen, she's dead. Give that back. I'm opening the gallery. These are my pics. She posted them for Stop me. Stop it! There, it's open. It's, it's... Oh, God. Everything okay over here? Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, she's God. torn open. She's cut in pieces. Look at her eyes. Look at her eyes. This is a crime photo? Well, why are you looking at this? She was so pretty. She was so pretty. I need to go home. I don't feel Owen, good. Give me the laptop right now. She's looking at me. She's not looking at you. I'm emailing that asshole Zuckerberg. I can't believe Facebook would tolerate this. I want this account gone. It won't work. I'm logging you off. I'm taking your laptop until this is over. I still have my iPad. What's wrong with you? She wants me back. She's dead. This is a prank. You're talking about a dead girl. Look at her pretty eyes. It's a picture of the murder scene. She's dismembered. She wants me back, Rosa. You're sick. You're sick, Owen. I'm leaving. Annalise, I love you. Always. Your eyes, your pretty eyes. I'm so sorry the software isn't working for you. Maybe it's because we didn't write it for dumbasses. Have a nice day. Hey, Owen. You look like crap. Yeah, hey, Jack. You okay? Tough night. I tried to call you. I had to think things over. Rosa's here been waiting for you. Hi. Hey. Figured I'd catch you at work. How are you? Really sorry. You never came home. I thought maybe... Rosa, I said some stupid things. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, too. I am. I shouldn't have... No, it was me. I was so worried. It was my fault. Owen, Facebook contacted her parents. The profile is gone. Oh. I know... We kind of killed her again. I'm so sorry. No. It's how it should be. She's gone. Are you sure? I was an idiot. I was so bad to you. I, I need to move on. I know I do. I really love you. I love you, too. I love you so much. Listen, do you want to? It's so nice out and... Hey, you just got to work. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Screw it. Go. These customers are assholes anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Come on, let's get outside. Let's start over. I was so worried. I was so scared. Oh, it's over. It never happened. Come on, let's go. Hold on, just give me one sec. What is it? I sh really should just check messages. What? I, I just need to check updates super quick. But can't it wait? One Please? second. There, I'm done. See? Oh, look. I got a friend request. Oh, who is it? <gasps> Fitty? One! Fitty! 
That's a wad you got. Oh, yeah. Good day. Very good day. I gotta ask, how much of what you make selling real change do you take in profit? 100%. And what's an average day? 50. <laughs> hey, guitar girl, how you been? Hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> Damn good day, you. Nah, man, horrible. I worked Westlake, had the same number of people standing around listening to me play, right? But nobody wanted to throw anything in my guitar case, you know? Who you talking? Hell I yeah, I know. Might be my worst day ever. Shit. Oh, shit, this is 45th Street. I gotta jump. Hey. Hey, wait up. Hold a 20 for me, what? will ya? No, man, I'm good. Oh, you had a bad day, guitar girl. Man. I I'm... had one of my best. What are we doing if we can't even even it out for each other? I'm good, but thank you. Thank you very much. All right, take care of yourself. Yeah, you too, brother. This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard in the back of the 358. Names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. The world's back here, brother. You gonna step on, you gonna step off. <laughs> Elizabeth Heffron. And if it's small and firm but kind of dimpled, it's a different kind of STD. Whatever, it was butt ugly. Molluscum contagiosum. I don't know why you two, I mean, they're not that bad to look at. What are you talking about? I'm just saying. The first one I ever saw? I tossed my cookies. And they don't exactly improve with age. Well, my Kinney's looks the same as the day we got married. You didn't see it until you were married? I had a promise ring, Wilma. You didn't at least peek? Four healthy boys, and the only difference 25 years later is that the way it... Well, never mind. No, the way no, it no, was. No, well, it's... It, it, yeah? I mean, it looks exactly the same, except it's got a little tilt. That's all. You mean like off center? When it's fully. I think it's cute. It lists? That can be caused by fibroids around no. the shaft. It's got something to do with some sinus cavity. What direction? Dealing. What? Which way does it list? Well, I, I don't know. Left or right? It can mean something. What do you mean it could mean something? Clinton's listed big time. Big time. What? According to what's her name? Well, how do you know anything about Clinton's? There have been tons you, of about studies. About Bill Practically Clinton's a field ding in itself. dong. No, that is just... I, mm. Wait. Hold up. What? We better take some readings. I don't see why you keep at it. It's called scientific procedure. It's broken, Sherry T. Face it. It's been broken for a week. Shh. See? Quiet. Yeah. This face mask is driving me right out of my freaking skull. Shh. You want me to whack the side with the proby thingy? <sighs> Might as well. What do you think? Sounds like clean pipe for a good long while. Where's all this water coming from? It's starting to get into my boots. It's supposed to be a desert up there, right? Water table's probably above us by now. Oh, shit. I don't like knowing that. You got the bag? Yes, okay, I got the bag. Where's the next cash? I'm changing this face mask ASAP. Up about three kilometers. But you don't know for sure, right? Because all your little GPS thingies are on the fritz. I'm taking off this puffed up monkey suit, too. Wilma. I'm getting a rash all over you my... You know that goes against protocol. I don't care. Listen to her, Wilma. She's a proctologist. Paleontologist. What's it really matter? We already we'll got... We'll change it out at the cash, okay? And now, anyway, just... God helps those that help themselves. You know, I'm just about up to here with your God crap, Gidget. Okay, here we go. Moving out. <sighs> so... 
So, Wilma. Yeah? What'd you, I mean, what'd you say to him after he gave you that STD? Who? A 60-year-old sex octopus. Oh. Well, I basically said that until he got that thing medically pressure washed, I wasn't going oh, near it. Damn. Oh, damn. Oh. Good for you. Are we back to the penis talk? I'll come right out and say Are it. we really back I've to the I've never penis enjoyed talk? going eye to eye with one of those novels. You two, they are not that bad. You just gotta think of them like snakes. Little single minded pink snakes. The way they set you up, they take your kids, they or send you to no ears. Not the uncut ones. Now, can we just. The uncut ones are worse. Worse than a bald mouth? What uncut ones? You've never seen an uncut one? Of course not. Where would I see that? Most of the world is uncut, Gidget. What are you talking about? I'm a paleontologist. I should know. You've been unemployed you know, a that while. is about the most disgusting thing that I have ever heard. When my boys were burned, they just, they snipped those bits off just right away. I've never actually said howdy to one either, Sherry T. Are you kidding me? Jesus, what a pair of lightweights. <laughs> it's like a weird... Purple eyelid, right? Mostly gray. Gray? God. Well, maybe grayish pink. Well, that is just, that is totally ridiculous. Whoa. That didn't take long. You got yes, the bag? Yes, yes, I've got the bag. How close are we? Uh, maybe 3.5 meters. Sherry T, I am so dang sick of your science talk. Could you just please speak American? All right, calm down. It's up about ten feet. Ten feet. You must be right on top of it. I see it. I got it. You got the bag? Right in front of you, Wilma. Okay. Oh, thank God. Another one bites the dust. They are getting more frequent. Maybe that's good, right? Bigger, too. I mean, maybe that means we're close to the end? Shh! What? What? I thought I heard something. What? Not sure, but... Oh, for Christ's sake, Wilma, it's just your nerves. It's not my fucking nerves, bitch. Okay. okay. If we could just ditch these masks, we'd Stop. be able to... Right there. I got chafing on my chin. We haven't been cleared to remove That's them. That's all you okay. ever said. Okay, everybody. Because just... it's true. Well, we're never gonna get cleared. Don't start with that negative bullshit. Okay, everybody, just... All right, all right, you know, rest If up. we've got no signal... Shut the hell up. We've got no fucking signal, breast Sherry T. Breast it. Shut Breast up. pump. Face it. What? I said breast pump, okay? <laughs> that is our safe phrase. If we ever got in any kind of trouble. I don't remember having Okay? It. I mean, let's just let go and let God. Okay? Okay? Okay. 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 Take it easy. Okay. Okay, now that, that was something. Yeah. Shh. Use your device, Dealey. Point it. Down. I am. What's it? Shh. But you heard it that time, right? Yes. Yeah. Like a wind or maybe gas. Gas. I don't know. A radio signal? The terminus. Maybe it's the pickup point. I don't think we can draw But that you heard point. it. Maybe we're close to the end. Well, it didn't sound like a radio. And the bag's not full. So what? That doesn't mean anything. It's probably some kind of incentive or something, like, hurry up, you're almost there. Gidget. I mean, they lost us, right? Maybe this is how they're, you know. Trying to establish contact? Come on. Stay together. I can't move in this freaking suit. Wait, you have the bag? Yes, for the billionth time, I've got the bag. Slow down. My hip. Hurry up. When we get to the surface, the first thing I do is get me and Kenny out of debt. I just want my sins reduced. And then we buy the boys the World of Warcraft. Come on, slow down, you guys. Them. Think they'll give you a job, Sherry T? Wait. What? <sighs> What's that? I don't know. 
What is that? Shine your... It looks what like... What is it? Uh, turn your headlamp over this way. Why'd you stop? It splits. It's a Y. Into... A what? A Y joint. A fork in the Two pipe. Two pipes. Let me see. <sighs> a divergence? <sighs> this isn't on the map. It must have been. Maybe one's a... For runoff, an auxiliary. Which one's a runoff? They're both the same size. On the schematics, it should be a straight line. Well, obviously, it's not. I'm not good with Ys. None of the schematics present so this it's not as straight. an option. So, big the deal. contract said go down the pipe, so sweep, and So, we just and have, to, retreat. We have to choose a From pipe. From point A to point B. I'm not good with choices. It never mentioned tributaries. It was open-ended, Sherry T. I mean, that's like how contracts are. And anyway, that's why the lump sum's so high. Because those kinds of contracts can mean anything. I knew they were all smiling too much when they sent us down here. And we're doing it for future generations, OK? We are sacrificing those for our big, fat grins. What are you doing? Texting the surface. Fat chance. Come on, folks. This is... Don't freak out. I told you I'm not good with choices. Well, stop messing with your mask. I can't fucking breathe. Wilma, don't... What are you doing? Fuck the mask. That's... Wait, that's... And fuck the suit. That's so stupid. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. That was really <sighs> stupid. Oh, whatever. I'm not spending the rest of my life in a decon suit. Well, you've totally gone against protocol. How's it smell, Wilma? It smells really good. It does? Like... Cinnabons. <laughs> Really? The point is, you're being exposed to all sorts of toxins. I mean, there's a certain acceptable threshold. Gidget, don't do it. Do it. Yes! Oh my Shit. God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It is Cinnabons and uh, it's fresh diapers. You two have just signed your own death certificates. We were dead before they even sent us down the chute. And you know it. No. We complete the assignment. The assignment? They take care of us and our families. They cover all of our medical expenses. I they... don't know if you've looked down recently, Sherry T., but you're no different from me or Gidget okay. here. You got okay. two craters where your breast should be. Half your lymph nodes are floating in pickle jars, and you've had how many recurrences? Okay, breast You've pump. been hacked up, irradiated, and poisoned to the brink of bankruptcy. And you're worried about a few Fuck more toxins? You. That is not the way that I see it. Oh, okay, see stop, it. okay? I mean, I mean, you don't have to say it like that, God, Wilma. It sounds so awful when you say it like that. Happy now? Hmm. Cinnamon. Cinema buns. You're. You're right. Fantastic. Charity. No. Shut up. Happy now? But. We'll all go down. Together. We are down, remember? We're 800 meters down, according to you. Oh. again. Is that? I think it's a person. No. Listen. It's definitely someone singing. Which pipe's it coming from? The left one. Hello out there. Hello. Shh. What the fuck are you doing? I'm making contact, okay? I mean, maybe... What if it's a trap? What if they're luring us down the left pipe so they can say we took the wrong pipe and didn't follow proper cleanup procedures and then they don't give our families the money? You mean renege on the contract? Exactly. Look, people, we've got to maintain um, a modem of 
trust here. Why? Wait. Who's got the bag? I've got the bag, Sherry T. Will you please just hit reset on the bag, geez? The bag is fine. Where's the bag? Oh. You lost the bag? What? No, I have not lost it. I just set it down when we hit the fork. You lost the fucking here bag! It, here it is, here it is. Oh, thank God. That was close. See, no problem. I'll hold the bag from now on. No! You keep your dirty mitts off. Jesus, Gidget, just give her the bag. No, I won't. She is the scooper. She is the scooper, and you're the leader, and the bag is my job. I am the guy with the bag. So you can both just, you can kiss my ass. The two of you have been bossing me around this entire waste system. I am in charge of the bag. All right, keep the stupid bag. Shh. Listen, he stopped. I don't like it when he stops. What do we do now? We have to pick a pipe and keep going. Uh Uh-uh. Wilma? I'm staying right here. I'm not deciding. What? I told you I'm not good with choices. Well, you can't stay here. Why not? Because we have to keep and think positive. Positive? I mean, how can you say that when Kenny sold you out? He did not sell me out. Yes, he did. We decided together. He is the one with the earning potential. Face it, Gidget. You're completely expendable. (laughs) Ow! Sherry T, you slapped me, you bitch! No, duh. And it's not about that, okay? I mean, we're doing this for humanity, right? For the sake of the kids. Come on, Gidget. Let's go. What? She doesn't want to come? Fine. No, we are not leaving her. Why not? She'd leave you. Because we are a team. Oh, we're a team. And that is what teams do. They stick together. Suit yourself. I'm moving on. You take one step down that pipe and I dump the bag. You wouldn't. Gidget, don't. I would. I will. We are a team. All right. All right. Just can the up with people. Look, I'm... You guys should go ahead. No. We stay together. He's got a combo now. He sounds a little like... Billy Joel? Yeah. I never called my daughter. I was gonna call my daughter before I came down, but... I wasn't sure she'd talk to me, and I got scared, so... I never made the call. That's all right. No, it's not. Well, at least you... What? I mean, you know why I came down? You're unemployed. Yeah, that. And there's no one up there for me. Nobody to call. So it really doesn't matter if I'm up or down. Sherry T. No, shh. He's got a good voice. I don't trust it. It's just a man's voice, Wilma. Exactly. It could lead us nowhere. Or he could lead us somewhere. Well, either way, it's got to be better than just sitting here. Come on. Wilma. I don't know. Faith is like a wish. That's what my pastor said. I mean, you can think of it like a wish, you know? That you believe in. All right. Just watch your step. That's right. That's a good girl. Just one foot in front of the other. You really think he sounds like Billy Joel? Maybe not, but some Italian. Wait. I think I know this song. They're all uncut, you know. Who? The Italians. I do. I do know this song. Not a bald mouse in the entire country. This is it. The Terminus? Where? I don't see it. It has to be. I think... I think we're going home.
for tonight. We want to thank AJ Epstein and West of Lenin for having us. For more information about us, the Sandbox Artist Collective, and how to get the podcast of this show, please visit us on the web, thesandboxac.org. We'll see you next time at the next live installment of Sandbox Radio. And until then, we have to say so long. Simon. With the Sandbox Radio Orchestra, Dan Tierney. And Annette, will you bring out our lyric cards? Because here we go. Follow along. I think you know the tune. Just listen to Act Two of Sandbox Radio, a project of the Sandbox Artist Collective in Seattle, Washington. This episode was recorded at West of Lennon on October 10th, 2011. It was engineered by Christopher Stewart and mixed by Dave Pascal and Rob Whitmer. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes, and we have a great website too. Visit us online at thesandboxac.org.